Atulaba Kusta TV Emine Gwanga Webali kubango tuwega sekonga tuli wano Awali uh, akawewo akalonji ku fairway hotel wano kukufa road ku plot 3 and nakasero wa walonji nyo waiti divunyo wato wolo kuga awo kusula rooms nonji baina gardens ezenja ulonga wano wetu today awalonji we wati no kubango wato wolo kule itawo mkologo muholza wene restaurant ya we asian and fusion restaurant wato wolo kubango kuna eti evyo kulia evyo nja ulo obelenga okuta edo wudde bulonji wano ku fairway hotel Wanga orona kuluwa lero kuna kuluwa nja ulo kule jila programu eno yo kuitibwa Nze anyangu hilda mbabali Matuke na kuwa ngatweza tako mchala wa umsumba Paul Rika Miss, sorry sister Linda Agendo kuwa nga ayogela na fe kubintuwe vye nja ulo kukuitibwa kwe So no kuwa nga agenda mguru ne mgeye na atu nyonyole bichibi ya sanga yo Yo Bitu fobia tu wuli nanti jeliri oba nedda atu nyonyole experience ye na yo tujwelenga tujitegera atenga tujulia wano kuprogramu wakuitiwa tukwaniliza nyo tuwega teko Hello Hi Praise God Thank you How is life sister Linda? Mm, we thank God we are doing well mm. God is helping us mm. Everything is fine we are happy to be in Uganda How is ministry? Ministry is good I'm happy to be working for the Lord since 2013. The Lord called me through a death experience. Before we reach there, yeah. I'm going to ask you a weird question, <laughs> a very weird, funny question. How does it feel to be a, a pastor's wife? Oh, well, for me, it's a blessing. To be a pastor's wife is like you are working for the Lord, the Supreme God. You know, being a pastor's wife is ethic and but when you know the way, when you have the truth, you are blessed. It's just like somebody say, I'm a wife to Abraham. You know that, oh, I'm a blessed person. But it's not to just be a wife of a pastor is the thing. You know, many people carry it as, oh, I'm a wife of a pastor, so you carry the glory up and down. No, to be a pastor's wife, you have to have the calling and you have to have the determination to do what God says. So the Bible says much is given, much is expected. So being a pastor's wife is good, but you have to be in a way that please God, because if you die in a, and the pastor's wife and go to hell, your punishment is greater than the normal members. So it is yeah. hard work. So it's a hard work. So you we know? should run away. So, People uh, should run away from being yes, pastors. Yes, if God did not call you, you and do not just force marry it. the pastor because of his money or his fame. Mm. No, because the title to be a pastor's wife, mm. you should make sure that God has given you the power, the grace, the, mm. the, 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 the knowledge, not to just flex in it or carry shoulder and say I'm a pastor's wife. There is a great tax to be a pastor wife and you must fulfill that tax because if the man of God fail you too you are failed so it's not just to say I'm a pastor's wife to carry you know to flex around a pastor's wife is somebody that you know that we are here for something there's a duty and we have to fulfill it and God is God he's not a man that can play mm. so you have to be very focused so if you know you want to be a pastor's wife you have to ask God for the grace and make sure that God really called you to be a pastor's wife. Not for joking, not, it's for, not for joking. Posing, not, posing. No, it's not for joking because people are looking up to you. You are a mentor. And if you if you, your lifestyle should be conformed and transformed in the way of God. And if you are a pastor's wife, you are not in the way of God. And many people are coming, oh, it's a pastor's wife. So because the pastor's wife is doing like this, I'm doing like that. So do you know how many people you will be misleading? So that's why you have to you have to be so focused. You have to have the fear of God to be a pastor's wife. It's not a careless work or a, a just to enjoy no it's a it's a secret position it's a fearful thing mm. so you have to be sober and you have to make up your mind to i'm a pastor's wife i'm a child of god i am a leader to carry people to heaven mm. it is not that we are all members no you are a pastor's wife that 
people are looking up to you are a leader mm -hmm. like a christ say i am the way when jesus came to fold the this for the disciples to follow him he showed them the way the behavior yeah. the, the attitude mm -hmm. the way of speaking you can see how jesus was correcting the disciples mm -hmm. you know if you want people to know that you are my disciple you should have love you should do like this you should do like that so for you to be a pastor's wife you have to have the characteristics the mannerism, the behavior, everything should be godly mm -hmm. because you are a leader. Was, was Sister Linda born in a family that accepted the Lord? Um, no. My family was like two parts. My mother was a Muslim. My father was a Christian. But my father is a Catholic Christian. My mother is a Muslim. So I, I was born and brought up in a home that no God, but in different way. My father knows that Jesus is Lord, yes, and Mary is the mother of Jesus. My mother believes that Jesus is a prophet and Allah is God. So that is the kind of home we grew up in. So you were lost in there? So I was lost in there. But when I, when I grew up as a youth, I know that, yes, Jesus is Lord. I came to like Christianity than being in the Arabic, the Muslim side. I came to know the truth that truly Jesus is Lord, he's not only a prophet, and Jesus is, is a lover. Is a, when you go to church, you see what the pastors, they preach about the love of Christ, they, they flex the, 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 the way Jesus wants people to live. I say, oh, this, I think this is the way. So I was convicted and believed that Christianity is the way, but not the, the original Christianity. I was not aware of how we should please Jesus. I was just carried away by the the popular Christianity that many people know today. When did you get to know of how to please Jesus? Uh, it all started in my encounter. In 2013, February 15th. I've been a Christian all through my life, working in big churches, like I was in Winner's Chapel, I was in choir when I was in Guinea, Conakry, doing the war. And then in other churches, famous prosperity pastors have been in churches like that. I believe those days that what, like what our pastors used to tell us, go to church, pay your tithe, you know, and that's all matters, you know. So that was how I thought that all, more, all matter is that go to church, pay your tithe, sing for God, use your talent, you know, build a house of God. That is all what God wants us to do. But I never know Christianity is deep. As the Bible says, work out your salvation. We have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. But the fear and trembling was not there when I was in those other churches. Because if I was having a fear, I would not be in a, a church where I would be sinning. You know, in the church, boyfriend, girlfriend, smoking, after church, go and drink, do party. The fear was not there. But I believe that church is the way of heaven. Christianity is the way of heaven. But the fear of trembling was not there. So the fear and trembling came when I had my encounter. On, in February 2013, uh, February 15, 2013, when the Lord made me to have a death experience, you know, something that your spirit, your soul will leave your body to go to the spirit world, to know what is happening in the, as we used to say, next world, mm. eternity, mm. you know, like as the Bible described when Paul and, and John was saying, I was in the eyes, I was in the, you know, I saw this in vision. Mm. So, God make me to have this vision, which is death experience, because I will say it because I was lifeless in the hand of my sister in the house. And but me, I saw myself somewhere that people are living. And these are people that we have, they have died on this wall. Because why I say so, I saw my late mother that have died for seven years. I saw her there and she recognized me. She speak to me. She told me what to say. So you see, so. Which I, means you were sick actually i was not sick how did it happen that it happened that in our community you know when you have boys and girls we sit in the area maybe especially like saturday people will be drinking you know area boys will be laughing so one of the area boys died so when he died we went to the burial service i was there in the burial service and the pastor was preaching that he was encouraging people to be coming to church, that the that some that the Lord that the Lord have told him if I can get it right, that this brother that died, his name is Christian, 
that now is in the bosom of Christ, that is resting because he was coming to church. He, he was in a young adult choir. So he was encouraging people that now some of you don't go to church. If you die now, which church will bury you? And see, now you have died. Thank God he was a Christian. He was coming to church and he was one of our sons. So me, I was very happy because why I was happy is because Ah, but other churches are saying that if somebody dies as a drunkard, you will go to hell. And this boy, we are all the way we're boys and girls, you know. Party. He, party. he was not even married. And one of the things that kills him, it was they detected that it was over drinking of alcohol that gave him kidney problem. So, and it was a womanizer, girls fight for him, we know. But now, if the pastor is telling me that he has gone to heaven, and all what matter because he was coming to church, paying tithe, and he was one of their church members, so he was saying, so me and where I was sitting, I was saying, ha, huh? because I have one of my younger sisters, Sister Finda, that I've come to know holiness. She was against my Christianity, especially my dressing, boyfriend going to party. She was telling me that God don't like this way. So I was disbelieving her because I have gone to my pastor. I asked my pastor that my sister is saying the way I dress, you know, half, half naked, you know, that time you are not married. So you believe that you have to seduce men anywhere you go to see you so that at least one can say, okay, let's settle. So my dressing was not really good. But I believe that I go to church, I sing in the choir, I pay my tithe contribution, I'm doing the work of God. So my younger sister will always tell me that you are just wasting your time. You don't go to heaven. God don't like this. So when I asked my pastor, my pastor said, oh no, it is in the Old Testament. Jesus has paid the price. We are now under grace. We are saved. It is not by works. It is by grace, by faith. So what my younger sister is telling me is just an uh, Old Testament that I should not follow her. Mm. So when this pastor now in the barrier was saying that this brother have gone to heaven, oh, I was happy. I said, so uh, we talk, with the news we are hearing that this boy die of drinking alcohol and give him kidney problem. And the one me I'm seeing that is a womanizer. But still he have gone to heaven. Oh, I was very happy. I'm well, so I'm safe. So I was like, huh? I turned to my younger sister. I said, have you heard you that you like criticizing me? You see, you know the boy now. Now you have gone to heaven. Jesus is not like that. Jesus is a loving father. He will not say no. So my younger sister look at me and say, both you and this pastor preaching, you are lost. She was a very, she, my sister is very frank. So I say, do you want to say you know the Bible more than this pastor? Because the pastor was talking about the love of God. Now the love has saved him. If you don't go to church, if you don't associate yourself in the church, you die. God don't know you. It's a church that will intercede for you. So I was very happy. Oh, me, I'm a Christian. So all this life I'm living then, if I die too, I'll go to heaven. So the fear was not there again to say I hate sin. So from there, immediately I have it in my mind that, so heaven is just free like this. All you need is just to associate yourself in a church by what the pastor is preaching now. Then immediately my sister heard a voice say to me, you are next to die. I, I, I thought maybe I was imagining something. So I was paying t attention to the preaching. So before the preachers finished preaching for the funeral, I heard the voice again. You, you are next to die. Very audible voice, so I was afraid. So when they were even pushing the cops to the barrier after the church service, I was not able to follow them. So that, I was afraid, yes, because I'm hearing voice. I asked my sister, she said she's not hearing anything. So I was like, ah, is it my imagination? No, this is a voice that is speaking to me. So that day I went out to see my friends, but I was not in a good mood. So, see boyfriends and whatever. So I came back home. This voice was still disturbing me. So, that day, as I was telling my younger sisters and my younger brother in the house, that there is a voice telling me I want to die. Mm -hmm. So my younger sister that was in the house said, okay, you have to rest and wake up. Maybe if you still, still hear the voice, they will know what to do. I pray because my former church I was attending, uh, anything negative is Satan, so I bind the voice. I bind you, I will not die. All the prosperity preaching, I will not die, but live and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. I will not die. The anointing oil was there. I rub it on my body, whatever. So I now slept. My friend was with me in the room, and then my siblings, they were there. So when I slept, I woke up in the morning. I noticed that I was not breathing well. 
like somebody that I have asthma, mm. but I was not, I'm not an asthmatic patient. Mm. So I was nothing, I was choking. I was like that. I said, ah, I was just like, ah, but yesterday I was okay. Not that, no, the, the, what I was just hearing yesterday was the voice was telling me you would die, which I thought that maybe I'm going insane or whatever. Mm. So I tried to manage myself, pray, pray, pray. But now I'm waking up, I'm not hearing the voice, but I'm feeling like I'm Fine. choking. I can't breathe. So I, I now took a deep breath and I called my younger sister. Finda, she rushed from her room. She came and said, Linda, why are you shouting? What happened? I said, I don't know. I'm not breathing well. Something is going on with me. I don't understand. So she now said, ah, okay, come down from your bed. Let's go to the sitting room. So I said, okay. So I now throw my two legs from the bed to stand up to follow her to the parlor. Then I fall down. Then I said, ah. I noticed that my leg was lifeless. It's like when you have become crippled or maybe you sleep and then in the night, stroke. yeah, thank you. Mm. So I was like, what happened to me last night? My legs, I said, I can't move, I can't, I can't move, I can't feel them. So she was like, are you serious? She was thinking first it's a play. Then all of a sudden I started bringing out some kind of foamy foam mm. flush in my mouth, saliva. I was just bringing out like I want to vomit. I was feeling bad. I was sweating. Remove my, I was, because I, I don't used to sleep with clothes. So I was just, I was sweating. Europa. Yes, I was just sweating. And our country is cold like Uganda because we are like in an island around maybe four, five in the morning. Very cool. But I was sweating. So she now called the other people in the house, my brothers and my friends that were there. Please, you people should come. I don't know what is wrong with Linda. See what is happening to her. They rushed into my room. Ah, Linda, what happened? They have plenty of questions. What did you eat? Where did you go? What happened? This, uh, so I, the only thing I was telling them, you people, should, I'm dying. I'm dying. Mm. You people should help me. I, I need prayer. You people should help me. I'm dying. Then Finda now said, let us pray. They started praying. They started praying for me. But as they are praying, the thing gets intense. Mm. You know, the feeling. It was my heart. I was not feeling fine. I was feeling bad. My body is, everything is disorganized. So, and I crawl. It's like my tummy was doing something like I want to use the toilet. So I went to the toilet. Nothing was coming out. I was just heat everywhere. I was just tired with everything. So my younger sister went there. And I said, Linda, let me lead you to Christ. Because she's a born again Christian. She had been a born again Christian maybe for more than five, four, five years. She know holiness, which we in the house, we used to laugh at her, the way she dressed, you look like old woman. I say, you the younger one, you look as if I'm the one, that you are the one that senior me, who married you. So we used to laugh at her for long. So she now told me that, let me pray for you. So the other brethren that were in the house, they now carry me. She sat in the parlor and said they should bring me. I was like a baby in the hand of my younger sister. So she held me and they say, Linda, say this word after me. Say, Lord Jesus, to say the Lord Jesus, I came to know that the Bible have told us that we should be sober with God when we are young, you know, the youth age. Because time will come where you will not have the energy to accept this Christ. So when I lie down there, Finda is telling me I should say, say Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. My tongue was heavy. was heavy. No power to push the word. Mm. So I noticed that am I going dumb? I was struggling to speak, to construct a word. It's like I'm trying to speak like a child. Mm. Like you are trying to put the word to come out. Finda and I was like, Linda, please say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me my sin. Please say the sinner's prayer. That she was just concentrating on the sinner's prayer. Say the sinner's prayer. I want to say it, but I don't know why I'm not. My spirit, my soul, my body is not communicating to say it. So as we were busy saying like that, I was like, Lord, Lord. Then my younger brother now said, ah, she's closing her teeth. That in our, in our country, if you close your teeth, it is not good. Maybe it's like conversion. The person can't be able to speak. So he now run into the bathroom and get a spoon. And then he now brought the spoon and said, put it in her mouth so that she will not be able to close her teeth. She can be able to speak. Mm -hmm. So they now came with the spoon, they brought the spoon and put it at the corner of my mouth. My sister was, Linda, say, Lord Jesus, say the sinner's prayer. She was crying. I was seeing her cry. My younger brother stand like this. Mm -hmm. They were looking at me, shaking her. 
my friends sit in the chairs. They, they don't even know what to, what to say because everything is going on strange. Mm. So I was struggling to say, Lord, Lord, my tongue was heavy. And then my younger sister was shaking me like this because it's like sometimes it's like I want to close my eyes. She would shake me like this and say, no, Linda, please. Say, Lord Jesus, please don't close your eyes. Please, my sister, don't do this to me. God, he was crying. And I had her. I was hearing very well, but to move and talk was a problem. But hearing was very good. I was hearing her saying, Lord, you know, I've made a promise to you that if you save my, my family, my siblings, I will serve you in the rest of my life. God, please, you know I've lost my mommy and my daddy. My grandmother just died. They are the only family I have now. If you take my sister, what will happen to me? I will hear her very well. So I was, was making me to cry. I was bringing her water on my eyes, but I cannot speak to her. I was just looking at my eyes, was glancing in my house. All my, the thing I work for, made me say property, jeans, beads, beads, all this thing. I was just looking at everything, my perfume, everything. Ah, I can, I was like, I'm lying here, nobody's helping me. A retreat point, it's like something was pressed on my chest mm. that I was not able to breathe again. So it's like I slept off. So when I slept off, I saw myself. Which means you didn't complete the Lord's Prayer. I did not complete it. It was a struggle. It's, it's like somebody in the hospital, you are telling the person, say something, say something. Doctors are fighting on the person. Mm. The person was not able to say anything. That was that point I was. I was yeah. not able to say it. So, but what I noticed now, I didn't, I didn't see them again, but I saw myself among group of people. You know, a group of people. Ah, where are these people? Where are they coming from? I know they are human beings. And where are they coming from? I didn't know where they are coming from. Even me, how did I get there? I didn't know. But I know that I just saw myself in a vast place, a place that I would look like it's like another planet. I cannot describe it, but this was like a, a place like it's just vast, quiet like this. So I noticed these people were moving. So I joined the queue. We are moving with them. I started moving with them. So as we were going, I was just looking. Then we reached a place in the distance of the walk. I started feeling heat, serious heat. Then I see heat was coming. Ah, ah, it's just like when the sun is pitching your body. So I was like, ah, where is this heat coming from? Then I now noticed that all of us were naked. I was not wearing clothes. They too were not wearing clothes. But I cannot be able to pick it. Is it. What is happening? Why are we not wearing clothes? My mind was not going there. So I was like, ah. The, the heat was pinching my body. So I look up. I did not see the sun. Uh -uh. Which place is this? Fear started coming into me. I have not been in a place where I have not seen the sun. Mm. Every part in the world you go, you look up, you see the sun, you will see the moon, you see the cloud. I did not see the sun. To talk, it's the sun that is too hot. Mm. I look around me, I did not see fire. I did not see something. So I started to say, ah, ah, what, what is happening here? Where am I? Where am I? So that thought start coming. Where am I? Where am I? So as we are going like this, the heat is increasing. So and then I started hearing a voice, voices of cry of people. It's like when I will make an example, like when you are passing through in a stadium, you do not know it's a national stadium, and maybe they score a goal and you are go. Yeah. You say, ah, a crowd of people are somewhere. Mm. So that is how I was hearing the sound coming from far. But it is not a pleasant sound. It's a sound of cry. People are crying like a burial house from far distance. Oh, they are crying, but this was a mass cry, people, voices. So I was like, where this sound is coming from? Where are they crying? Where am I going? So I look in front of us, where this road is leading us to. There is a tunnel. The road is carrying you there. That place is very dark. But I didn't see the road appear. Like when you enter a tunnel, maybe you go to abroad, you will enter a bridge tunnel, but the road will appear in front. But this one did not appear in front. It's only dark entrance. So I was like, ah, me, I started to get confused. I don't know where I am. I don't know these people. I only know they are humans, but I cannot recognize anybody. This is my auntie, this is my friend. And two, why am I naked? That is one. Two, heat is coming from somewhere I don't know. There is no sound. And then there is a sound of cry. I have not seen the people. So I now made up my mind that I will turn him back. Mm. So I made up my mind to stop the journey, to go back. Let me, okay, let me go back where we are coming from. Maybe I can see somewhere I know is my place or whatever. So whole and behold, 
make up in my mind to stop. You know, on art, when you want to stop your journey, you can stop. If you are walking down like this, oh, I'm not going again, you can turn. But this one, when I make up my mind to turn, I noticed that I was not turning, I was moving. So I came to know that there is no control. I don't have control over myself. I'm in a world where that I don't control myself anymore. Ah, I started crying. I said, no, I don't want to move. Where am I going? Where am I? Who sent me? Who called me? Who brought me here? Please, Jesus, save me. Were other people that you were with crying too? The moment, the, the way I was, I was not taking notice of them. But all I know is that I will see people confused. Confused, like maybe they too they are asking, where am I or whatever. But I noticed that we were not walking in a pleasant way. No laughing, no joking, no play. Everybody was in that. Like minding their business. Yes, you know, everybody was. He was, you know, like you go in the place, like you go to the prison, everybody is. Where am I going now? Which place? Are, you know, that kind of curiosity. So that is why I noticed on them, and it was with me too. So I started crying there. Oh, all and behold, when I look in front, I saw demons. That is my first time seeing demons live. We have been seeing demons on video, on movie, with horns, with this. And in the church, the way they would say, Satan is like this. It's black. It's black. <laughs> that is Let's continue right from there. I've never been to Sister Linda. 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 Na fa mikono ja muganda we muganda wenga ageza ako kumubulire ageza ako kumwatu zo bulokozi na ete yasobola kumuddamu bwatyo na asirika bwe asirika yagenda mu nsi endala etali mu musane etali mu chintu chonna na asangi wanga abantu bayiti basimbye line bayina je badda na yenga awuliro omuliro liro awulira ebyo chayo cha na yenga talaba muliro nga talaba kasana bwatyo na tambula Yagendo okulaba beings ezita tegerika yoyo setani guagambi we alaba katwe yonge lo kuanga to tegera. So you meet you, you meet this thing that you had that never I, met before. I've never seen demons live, mm. but I've watched more horror movie this one. So when I saw them, I'm somebody that I'm so somebody that I'm so afraid. I, fear is like I grew up in fear. It led to the hell. Little thing, I will be afraid. If I watch a movie like that, I can't sleep. If I see a dead body, I will be fighting to sleep in the middle of my siblings. So I'm somebody like that. So when I saw this one, ha, huh, my heart Skipped. is like, I never knew it was death experience I'm passing through. That was on my soul. So I was thinking, it's, it's real. So I was like, somebody should help me. Where am I? Somebody should help. Oh God, please, please take me up out from this place. I was afraid because seeing them, the way they look is very fearful. And I zoom them, I look at them. The way I look at them, you can't fight them because their body is like a stone, like rock. You know that when you see a man that is lifting high on, you know, you will know that ah, this man have muscle. Yes, and these demons, they have big broad chest, big hand, and they are very gigantic, very tall, you know, giants. Giant. So I was like, my own has finished. What will I do? If this one handled me, I was very fearful. So those who were in front of me, I saw the demons rushing at them like when a lion, you know, rushing at human beings. They were tearing them, dragging them to that place. The sound of the people, they cry. Oh, yeah. This is a... I started crying bitterly. Jesus, save me. Lord, help me. Father, please take me out of this place. Oh, I was like, Linda, what is happening to me? What am I seeing? Oh, God, please. So you hadn't yet reached? I've not even reached close to them. But the way I saw what they did to those ones in front, I was panicking. I was crying. My heart was panting. My body was shaking, crying. As I was crying, let me take down this glass. As I was busy crying, my tongue gets close. Then I stood before one of these demons. I look at him. His face was very fearful. He's looking as if he have a hatred for me for years. He was not smiling. He was very angry. Like when you have seen your enemy that find you are in my hand now. So I was shaking. I was standing there. I was shaking. And in my heart, I was saying, God save me. 
Jesus save me, please take me out of this place. God have mercy on me. I was asking myself a question, Linda, how did you get here? What happened to me? Where am I? If I'm dreaming, please, I should wake up, please. Then all of a sudden, it's like a roar, like a sound, like when something is very angry and rush at me like this. The nails was like lion entering my body. That was the first pain in the journey of hell. I screamed, I shouted. He started dragging me to that tunnel I saw. As we entered that dark place, the smell that was coming out of that place, you can gather all the rotting things you have in the Uganda, the dead bodies. It, I don't think you can compare to the smell. The smell is so bad that you, you'll be choking. And then the heat that was coming from that pit of that place, it's like a sulfur in my nose. I was burning like pepper. Then I noticed that immediately I, they started dragging me to that dark place. All the saliva in my mouth became dry. I began to dehydrate. I was not having, I was having taste of water. I want to drink water. My chest was dry. My body is shrinking. You know, it's like when you put a fish inside the oven, when it's shrinking, all the, the floppiness of the fish is going down. So I noticed that I was shrinking. My body inside is hot. And I have never seen, I have not seen the, the place here where, where we are going to, but we are just at the dark tunnel. And this demon was moving. moving. But this time I was not moving on my leg. After he grabbed me, he was dragging me. It's like when something is dragging on your leg, you were dragging like this. So he was dragging me, I was on my back. And he was carrying me down. I noticed he was turning me. We were going down. We were going down. As we are going down, the thing became more sincere, more painful than any pain I've ever felt in this world. I was choking, I wished to drink water, and my back, my body, the heat was too much that it's like, like I'm feeling my skin is melting off. I was so in heat. After some time, when we go down for some minutes, he now dropped because the hand was on my leg as he's dragging me. I was shouting, choking with the smell. So I was like, God help me, Jesus save me. But the place is dark, I was not seeing anything, but I know that they were dragging me in a place. So after some time, he dropped me. So when he dropped me, I noticed I landed on people. Because how will I say, the movement of the people pushing me, you know, when you, it's just like they're pushing you in a prison, people are pushing you. I know that people are here, so. She push, push, push. Then I open my eyes to see where we have gone to. We have gone to, whole and behold, I saw three things that made me mm. to fear God, to respect God, and to do His will, so that you will not offend God. Mm. Man need to fear God. If we don't fear this God, many people will regret the day they were born. Mm. Because we have been deceived by God is so loving, God is good all the time, all the time God is good, it is not true. God is good all the time to those that obey His word, that mm. keep His commandments. It yeah. is good because the Bible says, I will not forsake the righteous. Mm. But God is good all the time, you are a sinner, there is a time you learn that God is not good all the time. Because it's a judge, it's a just God, it's a judgment God, mm. it's a God that don't play. We have been deceived by Jesus is so loving, he cannot hurt us, he, when you just call on him, he will forgive you. Mm. And so you do your thing, we are saved by grace, Jesus has paid the price by many pastors preaching. And by that, make us to just do the way we want to run our life. Mm. This is our life, you should be run the way of God. But today, because we have believed that, no, we have saved by grace, Jesus has paid the price, so live your life the way you want, all you need is just something to church. Just pay your tithe. Just give your life to Jesus. Say the sinner's prayer. Won't save, ever save. Some churches believe that if you give your life to Jesus in 2000, through it you die, you are saved, and it's a lie. You have to keep that salvation. You have to keep it. In the sense that the day you give your life to Christ, you have to keep it so that it will not be spotless. It should be spotless. You should not have any sin in it. You should stay away from sin. Accepting Jesus, Jesus is a sinless God. You have accepted something on your body, in your life. You should follow his lifestyle. But you will not accept Jesus to then begin to commit sin, fornication, adultery, lying, smoking, cheating. And you say you're a born again Christian. You are not. That day you accept Jesus, fine. But as soon as you enter into sin, your name has been plotted out from the book of life. But many Christians didn't know this. Even me, those days. I so now you're in the tunnel. tunnel. Now I was there. So what I saw, 
this three things I was telling you, why I want my listeners to fear this God, to fear Jesus. First thing I saw is endless fire. The fire don't have an ending. To say, okay, I saw the fire from here to... Just like you would see water. Thank you. No endless. The fire is not looking like our kind of fire that is blazing. This fire is like, you know, as people, I don't know, how do you people say, pop? You know, when you cook something like pop, tick. That if you want to take it, you have to blow it very well before you drink it. It's very hot. The heat is inside. Mm. That is how the fire is. It is not scattered. It is thick. It is sitting on a high temperature. Very hot. Red. When I saw this, I said, God, show me mercy. Because... I've not been inside the fire yet. The heat coming from the fire, where I'm standing, mm. I'm being de- dehydrated. Mm. My body has started shrinking like, like, like old stock something. Mm. And my, I was, my skin is heat. Mm. My nose is peppering me. My eyes, it's like you are inside a oven. Not to talk about dropping there. So I was, I was crying. I was crying. Mm. Then the other thing I saw, this fire that is so reddish and very hot, I saw human being inside. It's like when you go to the, sh- the beach, the seashore, you see people inside the water. People are inside the fire, they have burnt. They have burnt that you cannot recognize, beyond recognition. You cannot recognize, is this a man? Is this a woman? No. But you will see the form of a human being. That is one. And the third thing I noticed, these people with all their burnt condition, that you can never see somebody like that in the world that have born to that condition that is still alive, never. Even the people that were born on heart, you can see their face see them, but they will tell you that this degree, they have died. These ones have born, some their eyes have come out, they have born like coal. But, but these people are still talking. Ah, I fear God. What is keeping them alive? Which power that is in the fire? What is making these people not to die? The suffering is too much. They have burned to the point that their skins are falling. They have become cold. They have become animal, roasted. Their faces, some of them, their eyes red with the fire. They are talking, fire is dropping out of their mouth. But they are still talking. And they were asking, Lord, show us mercy. It is hot here. We will not sin again. Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, we will not sin again. Then I say, ah, where am I? Who is asking for mercy? What is happening here? So you are getting closer to the fire. I I was in that place now. But it is not that I was going to the fire. I was standing watching. What is happening? What is happening? Then I was hearing sound of people. My eyes, my ear, Lord, give me water. Jesus. The voice that is raining there is Jesus. But in the world today, people fear to call Jesus. People fear to accept that they are serving Jesus. People fear to, to if they are in a Muslim place, they fear to call the name Jesus. Muslims don't believe in the name Jesus. Other tradition call their own God, but the only names that save is Jesus. And in hell is Jesus. Everybody. They are not calling Allah, come and save us. They are not calling Muhammad. They are not calling Buddhism. They are not calling Chinese God. They are not calling their traditional God because when they die, they have known that they are powerless. These are things that deceive them. The Holy Savior that they have gone to see there, that have the finance, it was Jesus. Mm. So that's why in hell, everybody, go, oh, Jesus, have mercy. Now I know you are the way. I will not sin again. Give me second chance. Send me back to the world. Jesus, I will repent. Have mercy. My sin is too much. The pain is too much. I started crying with them. I was hearing all these people crying. People will be, they are confessing their sin. Mm. The sins they don't want to confess. Their, this one will say, yes, I'm a thief. I accept now. I will confess it. Yes, I'm an adult. I'm a, I, I, I'm a smoker. Yes, Lord. So did you also begin confessing from where you were? My own face was, I'm confused. Then from there, I noticed three demons coming towards me. They came straight to me and carry me into a place, like when they say go to torture room. So they carry me to a place and they chain me. 
So when they checked me, I was like, God, Jesus, help me. My own was, God, just save me. I've seen enough. I don't really know what's happening to me, but I don't, I don't want to be here. So when these demons came, when they chained me, both my leg and my feet, and I was still naked. Then one of them stood in front of me and said to me, I call my name, Linda, you disobedient child. Then I begin to wonder, me disobedient, what did I do? Then he said, you disobey God. I call the wonder. You know I love God. Mm. Truly, as a Christian, if you ask my former pastors and either, I love the things of God. Mm. When you talk about support, maybe church want to build or pastor want to travel, we have to. I'm there. I love God. We do evangelism in the sense of rally. Hey, we have church program. I did. I would do all those things. I have boyfriends. I sleep with them. Tell them that please, I have to pay my debt in the church. And they said I pledge in the church. Please, if I can just pay the pledge. You know, you sleep with men. They give you money. Go and give go, give the house of God. Yeah. Then I love God. So I was like. What disobedience have I done? I've never fought in the church. Like other people who come to church, I thought, no, I've never done that. I fear God. Yes, I sing. Sing, people will be saying, oh, the Holy Spirit came down. Then I was like, ah, why is it the demon is telling me I'm disobeying God? Ah, I was just contemplating. My mind was running out. God, you know I love you. Jesus, you know I've done much for you. What did I do to you? What did I do? Then the demon said to me, I'm going to say two things here to you. One, there's something you don't know that it was a sin. Although they told you that these things are sinful, but you disbelieve. But I will make you to believe here today. Mm. And then two, mm. you were committing a sin that you know they are, they are sinful. They are sins. But you did not repent of them before you die. What's oh. the first one? Then I now know that. So where am I? Is death. It's a place of death now. So I've, then I now say, oh... So I've, I've left the world, so I've died. Ah, so that voice that was telling me I'm going to die. So I begin to remember my experience with my mm-hmm. sin. So I, they, how did I disappear from the hand? So the demon now said, one, I will start with the sins that you know that they were sinful, but you did not repent of them. Two, you were committing a sin of fornication. Don't you know that sex is for married people? You were not married, but you were busy having affairs with men, married men, boys, causing them to sin against God. That is one. Two, the Bible has told you to not be taking harmful things in your mouth. That time, me, I don't know Bible. So when he was talking about Bible, my Bible that time was my pastor. Whatever pastor said to me, it's fine now. The pastor said, dress like this, is free. Boom. Pastor said, don't worry, you can go to a night school. Like Pastor Chris, you are me Christ ambassador, so that whatever we put on our body is not a sin. You can tattoo your body. Ah, as you see, this nice tattoo. I have tattoo on my hand, I have on my back. You understand? So I said, ah. So poor, whatever I put on my body is a free. I was bleaching, bleaching, changing my hair color, tinting, putting. I was carrying six here. If you come closer, you see one here, two, three pairs, three pairs. Mm. I was having on my nose too. Yeah, so I see that tattoo. yeah, this is tattoo. So to tell you that I was inside fashion. I like all these worldly things, traveling with men, these hotels, sleeping, perfume, all these things. So when the demon told me that. Then the Bible told us not to put our foot in our mouth, like all this drinking of alcohol, smoking, I was smoking. So I was confused. I was not saying anything because I know what he was telling me. I was living in it before I, before he, I died, which I did not know that it was a death experience coming my way. So when he was talking, he now said, since you like taking hot things in your mouth, that's all this whiskey, star beer, hard liquors, all this, uh, you know, brandy we used to take, going out with big men. So you, you will keep taking them here. You like smoking. Then he now told me, then the Bible tell you not to mark your body. Me, I didn't know. My pastor did not preach it to me. My church is full of prosperity preaching. If I go to church, the Lord will bless you. Your enemy will die. This is your year. Receive your blessing. That was what we have been hearing. All this teaching of doctrine, teaching of how somebody to live truly. I've never entered a church that, uh, that teaches it. So when this demon is preaching to me and he's telling me this is what God said we should do, this is what God said we should not do. I was crying while I entered into the wrong church. So when he told me, like, 
The Bible told you not to pierce your body. Why did you do it? Do you think this body is your own? The owner of this body say you should not pierce. Are you not afraid of God? That is demon telling me. Are you not afraid of God? You are disobeying God's word. Ha! Huh? All this piercing, putting your name, tattoo on your body. Didn't you know, don't you know that the Bible says you should not mark anything on your body? The Bible has warned people to take away all these strange things on your body. You are still putting them on. I didn't know that God said we should not put on jewelries. I didn't know. My pastor did not say. I asked my pastor truly because when my younger sister came to know the church that teaches it, my pastor said it's a lie. That say my wife is dressing like this. If it's a sin, my wife will not dress with them. So I didn't know. But now I'm in reality, which is eternity, where I will not die. And now I'm judging for something that the, the pastors I believe on, she, he did not tell me. Mm. So the demon now is torturing me. Then I now told them, I say, nobody told me. Please, you people should forgive me. Nobody told me. My pastor did not tell me. Please, they should forgive me. Then the demon now told me that we don't forgive here. We don't have the power to forgive. We are here to torture you for your stubbornness. Ha! Ah, then he now told me the other thing, that you are a murderer. Then I now told him that, no, I've never killed in my life. Because you know when they say murderer, it's where you kill somebody. You have a gun, you yes, have a knife. knife. So I said, no, I've never, never one day. It. Then the demons, they laugh. And I was like, why are they laughing at me? I've never killed. I opened my mouth to, con to, to stop that judgment. I said, no, they should not torture me. I've never killed. They should not do this to me. Then the demons now say, the abortions that you were doing, you were committing abortion. You were doing abortion. The abortions you were doing, because it's not one abortion, not two abortion, countless ones. So he was telling me the abortions that you were doing. Was he animal you were killing in your womb or human being? I was, I was speechless because it's true. It was innocent babies. They were formed to human beings, and then I went to the hospital. They dictated I'm pregnant, and then I went and did abortion. I started crying. Then the, then the demon say, you are a murderer to kill innocent child. Yeah, human being in your womb. You have been charged as a murderer. Then it now come to the scene I was saying that it doesn't matter, which my pastor told me it doesn't matter. So I stood on that one. I was comfortable in that one. Now my outward appearance. Then the demon now said that, don't the Bible tell you that all liars will go to hell? Anything that make it a lie will not go to heaven. That is the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Then I now say, then when he said like this, I was like, liars. Yes, I know I was. I'm a, I'm a liar. I used to lie. Mm -hmm. But what is he coming out to my outward? He now said that the air, the air that you die with, was he your natural hair? That is the attachment, the weave on. I kept quiet. My, I was in great regret. That's why, the, that's why in hell there is going to be a regret. Many people will regret. Many things that they have been deceived of. So when the demon now say, that thing they call it on earth, is it, how did they call it? Is it not false here? False is lie. That is my property. And nothing of my property will go to that holy city. Because anything make it a lie will not go there. Then it now begin to come to that my body that I was toning, is this your natural color God gave you? Who told you to change the truth to lie? Mm. In now coming to all my makeup stuff, all these makeups that we are putting, the devil was making me to know that these are things that he used to change us the way God wants us to be, from natural to fake. And we in the world believing that, no, it doesn't matter, just to make us look presentable. Mm. The devil make me to know that most of the fashion things we are putting on is coming from him, to do it purposely to change what God, he know God don't want it on our body. Then he now begin to tell me all the seductive dressing I was dressing. That do you know how many people have lost after me? That the Bible have told us that if a man look at us, women, and look at us and lost in his heart, that man has slept with us already. Mm. Do I know how many people have caused when I'm walking? They'll get attracted. Yeah, they'll get attracted. Oh, my sister, the sin was too much on me. The judgment, I know that's my own. Because when the Satan was saying this, I now said that if this is the correct way to go to heaven, then I was not a Christian. Mm. And when the devil have told me the nakedness I was doing, all the seductive dressing, 
Then the, the devil was telling me all the strange smell I was carrying, putting perfume. And truly, some of this perfume, when we go to the, the abalis to, you know, sometimes we go to abalis to make men to lust after us, they will give us charm with perfume. They will tell you when you put this perfume on, when you pass, they'll and they'll get attracted. So now Satan is telling me even perfume, and these are things that he makes to increase lust in the world, to make people to, 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 to sin against God, because perfume will bring lust. Perfume will make somebody to lust after you. It will make you to act, a man or a woman to attract all, just for your smell. Some people just want to sleep with you. That he is doing all these things to, just to make us to sin. I knew many things in hell, what Satan said. Then I started crying. But the crying was, water was not coming out of my, my eyes, but I was yelling, I was crying. Then he now told me, I'm going to torture you. This is a place of torture. Hell, you are now in hell, you will not die again. You have died on earth. Mm. This is the place for disobedient children. Those that disobey the word of God. Mm. Those that choose the path of sin. That this is the place where you will regret why you were born. Why you choose the worldly side. And the Bible has told us that love not the things in the world. And anyone that loves the things in the world, the love of the Father is not in them. But when you read it in the Bible, we don't understand what is love not the things in the world. Mm. But we are still doing the things of the world. So we are blind. Many Christians, that's why the Bible says many are called, few are choosing. I'm telling you, my sister, many are not going to heaven. Even the Christians, because the Christianity, what I saw, nobody preached to me. God made me to have my own experience in a way, mysterious way, which I saw it, I had it, I felt it. I know, I have evidence about it. So when I came back to life, the Lord told me that I'm sending you back and giving you a second chance. Go and preach to the world. Go and tell the world what you saw. When I'm going to churches, they invite me, or I'm passing in the street, people going to church, I will be crying. Let's continue right there. Uh, to have to 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 chat, you may have to go into the room of God. Sister Linda Gamba, you took a one to. Unga, what you muli donga wola bobo, jinga bobo, changa bobo, sick boy buti. Unga bobo na la bobo, jibo na bobo mama sefuli anga muli donga. Katio go muli donga bantu muevali. Unga gubo chana yete bafa. Unga te basi gala bafa na na unga omuntu. Nenga taso bola te gerancho no mchala. Obono msajja na yengo umulido gubo ucha. Guba malao na yenga baka babacha alibala baita mbulu miogo. Nebamu isa awo, nebamu ze walala. Katu wabamu ze walala, nebamu gambe ino rumu jo yingi denu ya tocha kubona abona. Oba kutocha ringa, nga wana ganti baina jiba kutute, bagenda kukubaba kule vintu webi enja ulo, baku jemu webi gambe, webi mbio tango kubango yogila. Nebamu siba. In the Bamusiva, in the Bamusiva Ninja, at Bama Locumusiva, the Bamusomeda, a Vivia Colanga, the Bamgambo in a Vivica Vivia Colanga, a Vimungo Mani, a Vilanga Tomani, Catevi Noviari, Kenyan Balaye, O Bulimba, Navy to be a Colacum, Vivi, Bianuanga, O Mwenge, Navy Siga, the Bamsomer, a Vivin, the New Munga, or Vuli, the Sola Bito to Lacovi Malayo, Naberanga. Abera mwe yo tocha. Katwe yonge tu venga tu maliriza. We have very few minutes, so we, we are going to really summarize it. Okay. So now, after these these uh, these punishments that were read, so, sorry, the sins that were read to you, yeah. that you did this, you did that, and that, what was the next step? The next step was, I started going through my torture. So as I was there, I don't know God, the, how God wants to show me mercy. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it's finished mm -hmm. because when I was shout, shouting the name Jesus, when they will be putting spears, you know, the demon was there, will torture your private parts. The way you go to doctors, they will put iron, you will carry spear, insert it in me, in all these spears, and I do this uh, makeup, all these things, they will be punishing me. Mm -hmm. So as I was crying, I was crying. How many demons, three demons, how many of them? This one is tearing me. This this one is inserting, this one is doing this to me. It's like they want to tear me. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I noticed that even when they, they would tear me like this, you will notice that like your skull is open. There is a mystery that your body will get whole again. 
So I came to know that that's why the Bible says eternity, it's forever. If they, for instance, if they cut off your hand, your hand will, will grow again. I it will grow, we don't know. So that the punishment will continue. That's why the people don't die in hell. Even if they remove their eye, they will feel the pain of removing their eye. But the eyes will come back. The demons will keep torturing them, torturing them. It's an everlasting process. Everlasting. No, no more death. The fire will be burning them, burning them, but they will be crying forever. So forever. where does the mercy come in? So as I was there, all hope is being gone. Tortured. Being tortured. Okay. Then as I was there, I saw I was lifted up from where I was. Then I landed on my leg. Everything there was like magical or something. Mm. So I saw myself moving from where they put me to a place. Then I saw a man standing with white, looking at me, looking glorious. He looked at me like this. Then I look at the man. It's like when somebody is in the prison and he saw a, a light appear. Mm. I was looking. This person is in this that dirty, smelly place. Both the demon and us, we are naked. We are looking burnt. We are looking smelly. But he's wearing white and he's shining. He's not <laughs> dirty. He's not dirty, but even his skin is looking somehow. So I was like, why is he looking at me? I thought it's another spirit that I want to come and touch. But this spirit is looking clean. Then he looked at me and shook his head like this. Like he's pitying me. He shook his head like this and turned his back. No word came out of his mouth. But spirits communicate to spirit. How I just follow him. I started like he told me, follow me. But he did not say, follow me. He just looked at me and nodded his head and turned his back. I started following him. This is how I came out. As I was following him, behind me, I was hearing people crying. They were yelling. They were shouting. You know, the Bible said they would gnash their teeth. Some of the punishments I went through, I don't know who to hold to comfort me. So it was my teeth. I was like, God, the pain was too much. I was crying, God, have mercy on me, God. And I promised Jesus I would not see the gate. Please help me. So when I saw it, sorry, my dear. So when I saw him, when he was carrying me out, I followed him. As we are walking out, I will look around. I will see fire molding the people. I will see torture going on. I will see human beings crying. People are regretting. The dead body that are in hell, they are crying. Our loved ones that we think that they are resting, they are not resting, they are crying. Because of sin. Then I was, I was, I was, as I was seeing it, I was feeling it in my heart. It's like all of us should just follow and go. I was walking. I was walking. I didn't know the way out. But how did this man know the way out? The Bible says Jesus has the key of hell and death. Truly, it's only him know the gates, how to come out of hell. If you enter hell, you can't come out. Only God that will bring you out because the place is dark and it's full of fire. So as, as we were there like this, so as we came out, a wind was like a wind was waiting for us. As soon as I came out of that dark place, I saw a light. And then we were caught up. We started moving, moving. We passed the cloud. We were moving. Me, I was in this, my condition was like, whatever I'm seeing today, whatever is happening to me, mm. I wish I should sell people. Mm. I wish I should say, but who, whatever is happening to Adelie, I don't know what to say, mm. but let me just follow the experience. Mm. So as we are going, going, me, I don't have wings, but what is carrying me? I'm passing through the cloud, and this man is still full. I'm still following him, so, so I can fly, so I can move. I was like, which mystery is happening to me? So when we reach in a place, he started walking. He didn't say a word to me. We are, I was just looking at him. He's leading me to a place. Then I look in front of us. I saw a gate, a big compound with a fence. A beautiful mansion from far. The city is glittering from far. You will see light. It's just like when you say you go to America from far, you start to see light. Mm. So we are getting close to the city from the flight. So I started seeing beautiful, glorious atmosphere, mm. gold atmosphere. Then I said, ah, which place is this? This place is not in the art because the art is bright sun. Mm. This one, the temperature, the, the, the atmosphere is changing. And the place there is fine. The 
the gate is changing his beauty. You know, like I, he, he's changing beauty. Then I was cut off. I forgot about looking at the man. And I started looking at the gate. I said, which place they have this kind of gate? I've not seen a place like this. So I was looking, oh, wow, precious stones, powerful things. Then I saw lights coming in from, the, from that city, a very bright light. Two, they were coming like, like a moon moving to come to me. So when they get close to me, I noticed they were angels. It was the face that was shining coming. So when they landed on their, their legs, they were smiling to me, very full, powerful ones. Then I now say, so angels, truly they have wings. Because in church they have told us they have wings. Then I saw these wings on the very broad wings, lapping behind them like this. And they are human beings, they still have hands, but they have wings. So they look at me and smile. My sister, what they did to me, I cannot tell you, because I was catch up, I was caught up with their beauty their armsomeness. So when they are smiling to me, I notice they have something like a cloth in their hands and all of a sudden, the way they just transform me, I was changed. I look at myself, my body was all like, like a human being. <gasps> I noticed that I was changed, I was covered from my nakedness. Then as they finish, the gate open immediately. Open like this. Yes. No, I didn't I didn't enter. I didn't, I didn't know. I was just chained. I was like maybe this maybe this where the, the tank is, there is where the gate is. I was a little bit distant from the gate, but they came and met me and changed me from there. Then the gate opened. Then I look inside. But a light flashed in my eyes. I cannot see through. Then this light was like a hard, like a torchlight point in your eyes. So I was not seeing. I was still struggling to look. When I tried to open my eyes, the light is still there. Then through that light, a voice spoke to me and said, Welcome, my daughter Linda. The place was shaking, the voice. Then I said, Hey. Then I was on my knee. Immediately the light flashed into me. It's like it's something like drawn me down to my knee. So I was kneeling down. I was struggling to look this light. I was struggling to look. I want to see this compound. And I want to know who is it, what is this light blocking me. So I tried maybe like two, three times. The next time I try, it's like somebody blocking the light for me. So I noticed that there is a beam standing in front of me. Then as I opened my eyes, I was still struggling. When I noticed there is a beam standing in front of me, I said, oh, Somebody is blocking it. Then I saw the leg of the person. But this one is different from the person I saw in what? hell. In hell. This one, his body is like glass. I would describe like a crystal glass that is transparent. They have gold, like, like, like precious things are inside. I cannot describe Jesus. So I'm just trying. Then I noticed there was a mark on his feet, a broad mark. But this person is not having flesh like us. But he's having, his body is like glittering. Mm. Then I started looking at him, looking at the leg, go up, glancing at him to look at the face. Who is this person? Then I look at his face. Light was coming out all of his face. You know, like when you carry a torchlight in a zinc house that have holes, you put the torchlight, how the light will be coming out in different holes. That is how the light was coming out. It's so beautiful, but you have yes. Thank you. Let me summarize now. Yeah. So when he now stretched his hand to me, mm. I noticed there's another mark on his hand. Then I now carry my hand, put it in his hand, and then he now said to me, I am Alpha Omega. I'm the beginning, the end. I'm Jesus, the Lord that died for you. I was so glad. But my tears was like, is it Jesus that we have been talking in the Bible? Me, who am I? Even in the church, it's only choir. It's only, I'm not pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm not even closer to pastor. I don't go to Bible school. Why God choose to appear to me? So I was just surprised. Then he now said, welcome to my kingdom. He was the one that carried me to heaven. Show me the mansion, show me angel, show me Mary. Tell me to tell Catholic to stop praying to Mary. Mary is just a, a saint like any one of us that will make heaven. That the only prayer should be to Jesus. Because him is the only one, is the gate, the way to heaven. That can carry anybody to heaven. That no human being have the right to pray to any saints. Peter, Paul, this, to be worshipping them or not. That anybody that did that, the person is charged as an idol worshipper. Mm. And he showed us that, that the church is dirty. He now told me that I should go and tell the church. 
that many of his children are dreaming of coming to heaven, but they have missed the way. And the pastors, many pastors have left the calling, mm. left the way. They are now preaching about this wall, and this wall is not our own. We are just strangers here. That he told them to prepare us for heaven. They are not making us to think about heaven. That his children are thinking about settling in this world, the loving things of this world, the pleasure of this world. They are dying for it. Their mind is not on heaven. And they have chosen the dressing, the conformity, everything about this world. And those that die in the spirit of this world, the mindset of this world, the love of this world, they will never come to heaven. So he started giving me doctrines, things to do, all about how we should dress. The Lord said, I am a natural God. I made you out of my likeness. You can never see any nick, any false thing on me. I want the way I made you, that is how you should be. Be proud of who you are. The Lord told me that all these trousers women are wearing to seduct, seductive dressing, he don't want them for more. And then the last thing he was telling me that there should be different between a child of God and a child of the world. But today there is no different. People going to church, you will not see the difference of those going to the nightclub. Prostitutes that we used to say, hey, they are prostitutes, they dress naked, they put makeup. Today, people in the church dress like this. And Jesus said he wants a different. That when you say, I'm a child of God, people know that, oh, this one is born again. You and them. And he say in our dressing, in our talking, in our behavior, in our lifestyle, there should be different. If you're a child of God, you are walking in this place, what they will do, maybe they will steal, they will cheat, they will do. you don't do it because you are different from them. So that is what God was trying to tell me. So if you, if you go to the YouTube, you type Sister Lina, you will have the revelation because the revelation is very long. Yeah, the second long. visit again that Jesus went to show me some pastors that we think that they have gone to heaven, everything. Amen. So that is it. God bless you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sister Linda, Nebio, Evi, the Alaba, Gazenze. What you would talk of me and Gambanion your dent yet in your day? Tiari Mutocha room, Tocha room, no. Yarabi Kokuanga, Alaba, um, Sajayamba, the year, we didn't have it. Boat, Yamutuala, Mutipe, Chidala, Echirun, Mutipe, where I took her, Bamutis and Yambala, but Batis and Yambala, what a nasty thing can I? Yes, Christo. Nayenga nekanika a nekanika ni afana na bulala nyo. Na mugamba nti nkwani liza mu kingdom yange nkwani liza mu matwale gano. Bwacho na mu nyonyola ngo mwana wa katonda bwa ino kubera era nga bwa banyonyode ne muulira okuba ku mukamu wake. Bwacho bwe yabera no lugendo. Tu summarizes na era abagambe ati musobola ogena ne nchekinga ku sister Linda ne mbera nga mufuna byo nabyo na okolesebwa kuno aina ne second visit. Mukama wali batu yambe tujja muza nate. Bwe bale nyo ku kumira ku start TV bwe bale ku kumira ku okuitwa online ku YouTube to following eh, ku Facebook era eh, okuitwa online ne ku YouTube kona kona ku social media twitwa okuitwa online. You can osobola uh, kubanga or to following us, you can then say, and you can go here down by program. We know. Hurimo is the non denominational ministry given to the propagation of God's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, conferences, and the production and spread of holiness literature and materials. Pastor Paul Ricke has been mandated to raise up this great work as the international director, an anointed teacher of holiness with divine inspiration. He is the author of over 30 Christian books and many hundreds of recorded messages that can be found on the YouTube channel. Connect with us on YouTube and Facebook. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide Horimo is promoting biblical truth, righteousness, and holiness. Please join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time with the Zoom meeting ID 425-964-7780 or every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time ID 989-988-2681. To hear the undiluted word of God from Pastor Paul Ricca, the International Director of Horimo. The address of Horimo North America is 3776 Piney Mountain Road, Walnut Cove, North Carolina, 27052. You can telephone us on 336-251-4626 or email us at horimona at gmail.com. You can also visit the website at www.horimona.org. Welcome to Holiness Revival Movement, promoting holiness and righteousness.
worldwide.